Let's set up a milling work center for use in CNC manufacturing in Creo Parametric. And I have an assembly model for a Makino A55E. And what's interesting about this is that not only is it four axis, but it is a horizontal machine. What that means is if I use the drag components button, here I can grab on here, you can see that this translates and rotates, but also when I click, over here you can see that I'm translating up and down and side to side for where the tool is going to be attached. So let's get out of here. To create my work center I'm going to create a brand new manufacturing model. I'll hit the new button and then go to manufacturing and NC assembly. I'll leave the default name and the default template. Now I'm started in here. Since I'm going to reference that assembly later on, let's bring it in as a fixture. And I'll click on the fixture command, then on the components tab, I will assemble that particular part. Let me grab the assembly from in session, and I'm just gonna drop it in here using the default constraint and hit the check mark. And then just hit the check mark out of the fixture setup dialog box. And there I can see the machine zero that I'm going to reference later on. For creating my new work center, I'll go to the drop down list and choose that I want to create a milling center. And in this dialog box, I start filling in the information. So for the name of this one, it's going to be my Makino A55 underscore E. And the type is mill. For the CNC control, I am using a professional three. I'm going to leave the default name for the post processor in here. The number of axes is actually going to be four, and we can choose to specify to use rotation. It'll be rotation about the B axis. And I'm going to leave the rest of the defaults for the commands to be output. Let's go to the Tools tab. I'm not going to set up any tools at this particular time, but I happen to know that the tool change time is one second. Now we'll go to the Parameters tab. Uh, the maximum speed of this one is 1400 RPM, and the rapid traverse speed is 1968. For the pprint, this is any other additional commands that I want to be output, and we, op we get the menu manager when we click on the pprint button. And I can create a new pprint file. Here's all the other additional lines that can be output in here. And if I want to quickly just set all of them to yes, I can use the select all button and then click yes. And you can see them in here. Let's deselect all of them. And if I wanted to add in any other additional comments, I can select the line and then put in whatever comment that I wanted to. So for example, let's put in holder on the holder type line. That's good. I can click the OK button. And if I ever want to use that one again, I can save it out to disk. And I'll click the Save button, and let's call this one Output All, since I'm outputting all the lines in the pprint table. Then we'll click Done Return. And for the next tab, we have the Assembly tab. And for the machine assembly that I'm going to use, we can use the Open Machine Center Assembly Model. I'll just use in session to grab my assembly. And the coordinate system I'll use for the zero is the one that's called zero located on the table. For the travel, here you can see you can do the extents, or if you happen to know the distances from the zero location, you can enter in those values. But I happen to know the Y traverse is 22 inches. For the X value, that's also going to be a value of 22. And for the Z, that's going to be a value of 23.6. And I don't have any information for the Cycles tab, and there are no other additional parameters I'm going to create from the Properties tab. So I'm happy with everything in here, so I will click the OK button. And there we have our Work Center created. Then I can right-click on this and choose the Save button. And that way, it stored out that information so I could bring in this work center later on if I wanted to. I could go to the work center drop down list and then choose 
user defined model and there is the one that I just output and I stored with a .gph extension because it is a user defined feature. So in that way I'm building up my library of work sensors that I can use later on. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.